Hi, I'm Steve Dace. So if you're looking for a summer worldview camp, this is the place to be. July 16th through the 20th, we're going to encourage your kids to become the next generation of cultural leaders. We've got pastors like Douglas Wilson, filmmakers, cultural critics and commentators like myself and Matt Walsh from The Daily Wire. Sign up at calledconference.ninja. Again, Moscow, Idaho, July 16th through the 20th, Called Conference. Dot Ninja. Hear the world calling, but some don't do this. They're only trying to drag you back into prison. That's right. Welcome back to What Have You. I'm Rachel Jankovic. I'm Becca Merkel. We've gathered together in the heat of <laughs> July. In August, yeah, yeah, it's July now, isn't it? I almost just said July in August, but it's <laughs> not that. It's, it's just not. July. Just the plain kind. So I have to tell you something. Tell you me. know how people always are going off about the problem of evil. <laughs> and when well, they go I don't off, know. when you say people, like, are we talking about just your, at all times, your friends, someone somewhere, your neighbors, someone somewhere, Christopher Hitchens, Hitchens. Who are we? I'm, and speaking more in general when people are like, how can these things well, happen? Yeah. I mean, I know it's a thing. I well, just see, don't... but I wondered, as of our experience last night, why the mating habits of snails, or slugs, it was slugs. Oh, right. Why that has not been brought up more broadly. <laughs> Because I was like, I might not be able to, I might not be able to get my way out of that argument. This is overtly devious. Guys, I awake, I awake this morning to a picture of a picture on my phone that Rachel took and shared with me. And there it was. And she I've says, never been so offended in my life. <laughs> she texts with a little, this was the grossest thing ever. So, of course, she sent me a picture. <laughs> of course I it's did. It's not. Because you've never seen anything so hideous in all your life. And, and apparently, the slugs are... Well, I couldn't quite. I tried to. No. No. <laughs> Slugs only participate in this activity in the cloak of darkness. And last night, Luke and I go outside. Did you research and we that? Were, oh, well, see, that's where it went wrong. Is I you googled it up, see, which made everything you... so much grosser. <laughs> Well, of course it did. Well, I did this recently with a big spider that we caught, oh, too. Oh, no, Rach. Well, we caught a big spider, and I'm like, this is really weird. I've never, you know, I've lived here my whole life. I've never seen a spider like this here. You know, like, and I was really like, what's going on? And so started looking at pictures of spiders trying to identify it. And I'm not super skeezy about it, but, boy, I got the creepy crawlies about that. I had a hard time coming down from my spider <laughs> identification time. And especially because I kept looking at it. It was in this jar, and I kept, oh, like, yeah. going back to mm. consult it more mm. closely. And then I just could not get it out of my well, mind. you know what, somebody... I, I've never found myself to be troubled by octopi. Like, mm. it's just kind of a thing in the world that it you're like... It could be if they lived in the yard. Well, it's just sort of like, that's yeah. a weird mm-hmm. thing, you know? Yeah. Interesting stuff that lives in tanks and oceans, you know, far from right. me. Not part um, of my life, really. Someone, maybe one of you, I don't know, someone posted a picture of a bunch of kites flying. And the kites were giant octopus with these tentacles flying around everywhere. And I was like... Nope, nope, nope. Like that is <laughs> you horrible. Mean, you mean it was not a real octopus? No, it was, it was kites. No, but it was like there were like was six made of them up kites with these like, yeah oh. with these tentacles flying around. Yeah. And it just I thought actually take that out of context, and I am not okay with an octopus. Yeah. This is not good to have in the well, air. I don't like, think I like. I air. don't think I like a slug in any application. Like I don't think <laughs> there's not really. I but I I'm not offended if a slug must live somewhere. That's very but, generous. Of yeah, you. yeah, it was isn't it? But <laughs> Luke and I are sitting on the porch swing, talking, and then he just goes, "What is that?" And I'm like. I don't know what is it. We turn on the phone flashlight, and it is 
the slug situation. Right Big in ones, front, though. right Big in ones. front of the porch swing, there is a pillar on the porch. And these are the slugs, the the leopard slugs. Yeah, big. So they're big. They're jumbo. probably like they're like as big as an octopus. Do you think they're? <laughs> I, mean, I like don't want to really overestimate here, but I want to say they're three like inches, four inches, four? three inches yeah, long. Big, big jumbo. nappy old noodles, and <laughs> and the part that no one knew about. And didn't want to know. I'm not going to go into the details. Yeah, because, thank you. Thank but, you. But you need to know that they were hanging off of the side of the pillar from like a foot of slime. Ow! Like suspended no! in midair. No! And that's why we were like, what is happening here? Like, how did this... I didn't know that this happened. Like midair, not on the pillar? No, they were not stuck <gasps> to the pillar. They were just oh! swinging in the breeze. Oh! And when I and when I look this up, I see one of the pictures that someone documents of these nasty, enormous slugs swinging from the boughs oh, of a tree. Oh. And then you think you could walk into that in the dark and get that on your neck. Like, I was like, I don't think of these oh. slugs as being suspended anywhere no, in air. No, So that was really That's dark. Like, it's basically, it was dark. it's like having an octopus in the air. Yeah. And, it's like, no. And, but a, but an octopus being deviant. Like, it, the whole thing was so bad. It, it might not have been deviant. No, but see what I'm saying Rachel, is, I'm pretty convinced, been... having gone and read what oh. the heck happens here, I'm pretty convinced that this is a post-fall creature. <laughs> like... <laughs> Cannot have been there for the it was good. <laughs> I feel like this is just not right. I oh, just can't even like the about lake it. of fire that's reserved for the devil and his angels. And it's those like, and, and those. slugs. Are you just and them putting them under the heading of Satan's angels? I am. I am. I think that that would be a more fitting oh, name. Dear heavens. So Maybe now they you will. all know, and you can be equally grossed out. Maybe they'll with be me. redeemed in the. Coming resurrection. Yeah. Well, then, but the funny part is that that only means you have to kill a slug that big. How are you going to kill it? No. With a shotgun, I think. We did not kill the nappy old spider because I felt bad for killing it for just being for a being spider. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Which is funny. If it had been in the house, I would have shot it with a real bullet, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but being outside when we just gathered it up to yeah. look at it, I don't know, <laughs> Luke threw it out in the yard. I think I would have probably thought we should let it be done with its life, but he gave it away to the yard, and I was all right with that. But, but the slugs, I'm like, but we don't want them to go lay their seven billion eggs in the garden. Like they Do should slugs be dead. lay eggs? Yes. The dark deeds. I know the dark deeds. Tell me you didn't slug. kill those. Oh, we killed them. How? I don't want to know how. Yeah, this is what makes it funny. Yeah. How are you going to do it? Because they're like a huge slime bomb. Like, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> so the well-known treatment, of course, is to salt. salt them. But that made me feel like I was getting into the superstitious arts. Because there I was throwing <laughs> salt at them. <laughs> Isn't that a thing, like, to throw salt over your shoulder? Maybe. There's some weird thing like that, and it made me laugh that I was like, yeah, here I am casting oh. little pinches of salt out over it. Like, cleanse the area. Cleanse it. So oh, gross, Oh, nasty. So now, because it was so gross, I had to share it all with of you course, guys. Of course, everyone. Actually, I've reserved your sensitive hearts from quite a bit of the bad news about well, this. Well, I... <laughs> There's a lot of bad news, guys. Lots of bad news. I, and I have a picture of it, but I don't know that we ought to include that in this week's Facebook. No, you don't want to know. <laughs> Just know, guys, that it could have not really been worse. Satan's angels are things you don't want to run into. <laughs> So, oh my well, word! Got you up to speed on all the I'm excitement glad. in I'm my glad. life. Here I was ready for a problem of evil discussion, but it was a problem. It, there's something about it that is that is deviant enough that you feel like, well, <laughs> that can't be okay. <laughs> like, I don't know. Oh man! Yep, that is funny. So you've been doing things at teacher oh, training, man. right? Yes, Logos um, has an annual teacher training where people come here to Moscow and do a few days of just workshops and hearing talks and I am doing I think five more um I did was on a panel today and then have five more talks over the next few days but 
it's full of gripping things like testing and mm. you know worldview analysis and stuff like this. Um, but then, um, what was I going to tell you? Oh, my bedroom project. The quest. The quest. Mm-hmm. It's like, I do. I feel like I am after the questing beast. It's like, <laughs> I'm trying to finish. And I told Rachel this the other day that if you get 98% there. This is Becca's life and philosophy. And you don't get 100% there. You might as well have not even started in the first place. I think if we want to fight about it. We should just talk about the apples. Anyway. But <laughs> well, I'm a because, big because I'm a big believer in that ninety percent was still ninety percent of well, the way there. Well, no, I'm not arguing with that. I'm just saying that then it backslides immediately, and then that's what I mean about you might as well have not even tried. But doesn't it backslide from a hundred percent? Not as effectively because mm. the thing. No, it doesn't because. Because some deal. new situation will arise that will take you back to yes, 90%. Yes, okay, we live in a fallen world. It's true. But the thing that I'm trying to emphasize here is the broken window syndrome. Yeah. You've got one broken window and the whole neighborhood falls apart, right? Now, let's say that you are starting as I was starting. We're already 60% of the windows are broken, right? <laughs> that okay. bedroom okay. needed a redo because there were just too many sure. unorganized sure, yeah. things. So, then you proceed to break all the windows. You know, you pull everything out of everywhere. So, you're saying don't fix half the windows. Fix them all. And I'm saying, but if you get it 98% there, but you still leave three broken windows. I'm just saying. I, I would see, I think what we have to back up on, where the real heart That's of our... your Dr. Pepper. Where the heart of Whoops. our disagreement would be, would be that I would say, don't go break the rest <laughs> of the windows. So, I would it's say... It's a metaphor here. I know it's a metaphor, but I'm saying... Well, it doesn't really you matter. You can't. There's so much strategy and psychology, like self-help, like like the way that you have to motivate yourself. People are so different. And I have I have done but times. But you can't, nobody can clean out a closet without pulling everything out of the closet. And once you've done that. I can. Oh my gosh. Now you're, I, just, now you're just bragging. No, I'm not bragging. I'm yes, saying I made myself do this one time. Because she's being pompous. Because back in our early marriage, at some point, I had a closet that got out of hand. <laughs> And it was because we lived in a tiny apartment, and it was a tiny closet that seemed spacious to us because it was bigger than our last closet. But nonetheless, it was a small little hall closet. It counted as a walk-in closet, but it was not bountiful. It was little. But it needed to have Luke's clothes, my clothes, sort of general kitchen hospitality equipment and my sewing machine were all in there. You know, it was like a jammed up closet and it got out of hand. Now, you know how things get out of hand with the like laundry basket that has the one thing that needs to be mended and two things that should go to the dry cleaner. And then before you know it, and then it gets some gift bags mixed in there too. Yeah. And then before you know it, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. Batteries. Somebody's like, where's the ruler? And you're like, it's in that laundry basket. <laughs> you know, that one that we keep that we never intended this to have. This is what I'm seeing. Like, don't have the laundry basket. Right, but I went for a long time of not doing it because I felt like I never had time to deal with it. Because yeah. I was like, I'm going right. to have to take everything out. <laughs> and I have to spend an entire Saturday doing it. Well, then I went on a spree of setting a timer for myself where I would set a time. I had a thing where I would give myself... 15 minutes in each room and it was yeah. like a stop put your pencils down sure move yeah. on mm-hmm. if you haven't finished the kitchen in 15 minutes doesn't matter because now it's time to be in the yeah. living room and um but I did that and then I had I had like 15 minutes in each room and then 15 minutes for the floors through the apartment and then I had a list of jobs that I would do like just 15 minutes worth of work on it and I did that closet like, oh, I have just 15 minutes yeah. to do it. And it is so embarrassing how much better you could make something in 15 minutes of working well, on it. Well, that's true. When I postponed it for, for way too long, thinking it'd be a much bigger job. There's some kind of a principle that that is called about work expands to the time you allow it. Sort of. But but the thing is, is in my defense, yes. If I'm you not need talking to rearrange, about just your bedroom. If you need to rearrange, like, a kitchen drawer that's gotten a bit untidy... Yeah, you can you can do it within the confines of the door. 
but I actually was moving all of Ben's clothes into this closet, which yes, meant that my mean, clothes had to be restructured, yeah. which meant that you couldn't do anything without taking it all out. And and you did a built-in. And then, yeah, it turned into a built-in. Yeah, so guys, I just like to say, you know, it turned into a built-in. <laughs> I just, it's just a thing. And it, it and did. It turned into a built-in. Built-ins are great, in. but no. it turned into a built-in. Built-ins you know what's going to happen? They speak to my soul. You know soul. what's going to, and they do, but the you know heart what? of my they built ins do not speak to my soul. Oh man, they do to me. Yeah, they don't speak to oh. me. Well, you know why? Why? Because um, you know what doesn't speak to my soul? Rubbermaid bins. I hate them. I would not say they speak to my soul. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't have a built in, what have you got? A rubbermaid bin. Really? Well, what else have you You're got? You're calling me out on oh, having a rubbermaid bin? I have a rubbermaid bin! <laughs> Podcast listeners! <laughs> I, I admit, have, I confess in I, public. Um, <laughs> I have a lot of Rubbermaid bins, and I, it displeases me. And well, so, the thing that I don't like about a built-in, though, is that... Well, so what? Did you have a built-in, like, shelf for shoes? Well, Rach, it, it's going to get so much worse. And I don't even know if I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. So, did you do a built-in mm. shelf for shoes? Oh, oh, yeah. It's there. Okay. So, see, like, an example of something that would happen in my mind with a built-in is that right after you had a built-in <laughs> for shoes, you have one pair of shoes too many or one pair of shoes that doesn't fit in it right. It's okay. You can oh, get a rubber made I bin. cannot take that. <laughs> like, if you made a permanent solution for an impermanent problem, uh. then I can't even with that. I hate that. Here's the thing, though. I, no, ca- I, I should be clear argument. that I have lived with shelves and things that are built in just without stress. I have stress, a, a but... counter argument. Yes. This is, this is like true of anything where you say you've just allotted yourself the sock drawer. What happens if someone buys you more socks and they don't fit? Or I just have a silverware drawer, but now I bought a ladle and it doesn't fit in there. Now, the thing is, is sometimes that happens and you have to go back and, you know, like rethink some stuff. Yeah. But in the meantime, it's not a problem yet. <laughs> <laughs> and I just mean drawers are a fixed size. I remember, yeah. You know, and drawers you have to deal with. It's not like an ever expanding drawer. You just have to kind of deal with the constraints. Yeah. I, I... Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll hire just... you when we're building to come over and design me up built in because I'll be the best client to work with. <laughs> you I will be nothing but be joy. A dream I will machine. be nothing but joy. I'll be like, but where am I going to put my rubber mates? <laughs> <laughs> I would have. Like I a, don't have rubber mates like everywhere. I design you a dispenser. I do have a rubber made dispenser uh, for when you <laughs> like a Dixie cup. <laughs> A Dixie cup machine <laughs> for my rubber. No, the thing is, I have rubber maids, but like my goal with this clo- with this bedroom project, has been to get away from any rubber made solution. Like, if it has to be stuffed in a weird thing and put under the bed, I'm trying to come up with a different way, <laughs> some other way around it. It's the quest that will never be done with. The quest but, of trying to fix yeah, our problems. Yeah, the never ending search for organization, but. The thing is, though, straight up quote of Mary Lou Busby. Already, oh yeah, you're right. Already, I know what you think about my built-in, but it's going. I don't think you do. Yeah, I, don't I do. You know. I know. I bet hardcore. it's cool. I, I, I don't think that I. I'm <clears> saying <throat> I don't gel with the built-in solution. Well, what would you do if you had to? If you were going to design a closet, what would you do? Nothing. No, I would. Something's going to have to be okay, built in there. But that's different. You have you have a basic thing is different than a highly specified a swinging arm for I earring mounting. I don't have mounting. a swinging <laughs> arm. There is no swinging <laughs> arm happening. Uh, but we all know that the thing that delights your heart is that. <laughs> no, I I am like I said. Where I'm, are you putting your earrings? I am this? harboring. Are your earrings making an appearance in Not the building? Not in the closet. No. no? I'm still struggling because, um, I have, there's, there is a bigger shoe problem that I need to solve because I've gotten Ben's half is really well done. My half is not yet completely satisfying, but okay. it's, we're coming. It's coming along. Okay. I'm, the pile is dwindling of things that I have to sort. <laughs> the jewelry is in a little dresser that's over by my bed. Um, 
What was I going to say? Oh, no. I was just going to tell you that the built-in thing is getting worse. It will. It's going to get worse. What are you about to do? I don't know. I think I'm going to wait and have to show you a picture after it's done and it's too late. Too late for it's me like, to no, naysay? No, it's like... I don't think there's such a thing as too late for me to naysay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's no, probably I just, very cool. I know how you'll feel about it. Because I, too, think it's a little, maybe a little far, <laughs> a little far out. There's a... <clears throat> oh. But I, uh, we, when we lived in England, I was buying all of our furniture off of eBay for like a pound fifty. And, um, man, that was a glorious, glorious scene because you, I would search for like within 50 miles of Oxford because we moved over there and it was a totally unfurnished apartment. So... Well, it wasn't an apartment, it was a house. But, like, the first night, we were literally lying on some pink carpet with, like, we didn't have a pillow. We didn't have, like, it was hardcore bad the first night. <laughs> oh, no. And then uh, the kids, though, we borrowed some couch cushions from our friends, and the kids slept <laughs> on couch cushions, but Ben and I were on the pink carpet. Anyway, I think we used a sweatshirt or something to, to <laughs> keep so your gross. face off of it. Yeah, it was nasty. Uh, it was nasty. So anyway, but we were starting there from... Been some slugs. <laughs> <laughs> May have been. And the thing is, is um, we were then uh, starting from scratch on furnishing it. And eBay over there is like, wow, is it amazing. I never buy anything on eBay here. Because even if you found a good deal, it would be like in Minnetonka, yeah, yeah. you know. Totally. But I um, would search within 50 miles and then found these amazing deals of like really pretty antiques and things. And we would drive there in our little hilarious Volvo that we were driving, sort of a Volvo station wagon <laughs> thing. And then we would have to tie it to the roof. And the way this whole thing always, always went down is we would first arrive and we would get out of the car and the people would say, you drove all the way here from Oxford? And it was always like, we did, yes. It was like an hour to get here. Which here is hilarious to yes, feel like nothing, that's much yeah. of a drive. But yeah. anyway, so first it was a yes, we, we came from Oxford. Then they would say, how many kids are in there? <laughs> Because we would like have all yeah. five. Oh, yes. There's five. Yes, they're all ours. We'd go through that. And then it would be, where Where are you going to put it? This isn't going to fit. And we'd be like, oh, yeah, uh, we're going to tie it to the roof. And then it would be like they couldn't even speak anymore. It was sort of like we don't, <laughs> <laughs> we don't even know what to do. They thought it was probably illegal. They would tell us about how bad it is um, to tie things to roofs. I would sort of soothe them as Ben was putting it on the roof. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I would tell him, no, he's very good at tying knots. Um, so, so that we would drive back to Oxford with like a wardrobe on the roof of the car. But this is all to say... I bought this amazing wardrobe for a one pound that was Ben's while we were there. And it was this burled walnut, gorgeous sort of art deco gentleman's wardrobe. And it was very cool. And it had like all brass sort of things inside. And it had these little brass tags on the shelves. There was little shelves. And one said hats. And one said shirts. And one said sundries. Are you making brass and tags? Like, you know, <laughs> Yes, I might. I'm like, I could easily go to the trophy shop and I could get to, to, to do a, a brass tag that, because that says, what is skibbies. a trophy if not a well-organized closet? <laughs> I really want a brass tag that says skivvies on oh, it. Oh my word. So Shad, Shad is an early reader. I mean, you know, it's reading, but I when we moved, I had all the kids in. I have those, like cube organizers that I used for their clothes so that we could just easily move one from our old house to our new house and not okay. like I don't like dressers for children you are taking it to the other <coughs> limit like that I haven't you that's, don't even like a new dresser. news like a like, dresser is too close to a built in I don't like dressers for children because who knows what went where and like you can never locate a clothes oh yeah this is because I my kids don't have very many clothes like we keep a pretty shallow uh, bench okay. on our clothes okay. so you have to be able to find what you have okay whatever I wrote on some of the bins so that they could tell what was what but Shad had two that were 
um, empty still okay. from his. And I, and um, anyways, I came into his room and saw Red. He has a stuffed dog named Bob, a little stuffed animal. And written on one bin, it said, bed for Bob. And <laughs> Bob was in the bottom of it. And then, the, and then the one next to it said, nothing. <laughs> like, N-U-F-I-N-G. Nothing. There's nothing in it. this if one. only there was a brass tag. I was like, there's nothing here. Nothing. Yeah, so if you have any blank spots in your closet, get a little brass tag nothing. that says Nothing. It might not be brass. I don't know. I'm I'm just pondering I the think, question. I think that it sounds like a priority. It. I think you're going to need to get that like done I fast. Like I said, if you don't get it to 100%, Rach, if you don't get those brass tags <laughs> on there, then you don't, you might as well have never started at all. <laughs> <laughs> you no. haven't taken it to the limit. For for truth, I, I have not yet done brass tags. We'll yeah, see. but you might. We'll so, see if we do. Okay, so we should talk about something else. I don't know why, because I think it's We're gripping. flying so high <laughs> on this topic. Slugs and brass slugs. tags. We're covering the important issues. <laughs> uh, but what is important? What is? What do you want to talk about? Nothing. No- <laughs> Nothing is important. <laughs> um, what about like, well, no, you go ahead. Nope, you, you say. look like you have a thing. No, I don't. I have no things. What was your thing? Well, I mean, maybe we're just a broken record about keeping short accounts and emotional control of yourself. Yeah, I don't know that you can say yeah, it too many times. Yeah, that's the thing is that, like, if we all knew it, then why do we keep having a problem with it? You it's know? a good question. It's like the, the um, I think we had some more questions about teaching emotional control to your kids. Uh huh. And it seems to me that the real heart of it is trying to get it yourself first. Mm-hmm. Because so often, I think, well, in whatever trying circumstance you're in, sometimes it's just because it's a rainy, drizzly day and you're put out. And yeah. sometimes there's really genuinely things wrong. And sometimes it's because you're in the middle of an important project and sometimes it's because you know whatever there's just lots of you forgot to go to the grocery store we have lots of ways of um explaining away our own lack of emotional control Uh but what's especially bad is when you bring that to your child trying to teach them to have emotional control you know how often you see the parents snapping on the kids. Well, I said something cuz I told you I was I mean, I was on cross politic uh maybe yeah, 2 weeks ago or a week okay. ago, something, I don't know. But something that I said there that it reminds me of this theme, so this is why I'm bringing it up is that it um just saying that one of the reasons that I more often talk to mothers than to single women is that it's not because I think a mother has any more value as a person than right. a single woman or a woman without children. But I think that mothers, there are Christian mothers who get up in the morning to ruin other people's lives. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and, that, and that you're like, if you start at dawn being a bad testimony to your yeah. children, like first thing out the, you know, first thing in the morning, fuzzing. Second thing in the morning, feeling sorry for self. Third thing in the morning, snapping at others or, and being unkind. Or, here's another one. Hmm. Um, turning to solve your spiritual problems by means of other things which are not scriptural. Yes. So, there are all kinds of those things that are peddled to us upon the social medias all the stinking time. Yeah. About take um <clears throat> this pill or try this mindfulness technique or go on that vacation or the or real problem is that first. you're not exercising as much as you should be and or you, you either... ate the wrong stuff yeah your and gut must be inflamed something is wrong and it's causing your heart to sin yeah. but the thing that they they try to fix a sin problem with physical you know Means. sort of physical means. Well, it's just and a grown-up version of your little kid hitting you in the face and you being like, did you need a snack? Right. 
<laughs> right? Like, oh, are you angry but because see, here's the you thing, wanted though. a jelly bean? Whenever I see Christians falling into that, usually there's a there's a very um, sort of pat answer that they have, which is, but God made us with bodies, and our bodies and our souls yeah. are connected, and if you can if you can minister to the body in such mm-hmm. a way that makes the soul better. Now, granted, that is true. We have bodies. But that is the most hideous cop-out, if you think oh, yeah. about it. Because well, because does the Lord ever talk like that? <clears throat> That's the question. The one, <laughs> the one who made our bodies, is he the one who says, don't worry about your selfishness? <laughs> it's probably a vitamin deficiency. Right. You and know, like... Mm, no. no. Now, the thing is, is is it harder to be godly when you're hungry and tired and itchy? Yes, it is harder to be godly. But um, that kind of is the place where the test is to find out if you are godly or not. And mm-hmm. so, basically, if you're saying no, you have to make yourself comfortable at all costs. And that's where godliness lives. That is just directly in revolt against everything God teaches us about sanctification. Yeah. Because it's not about like, oh, if only we could live in a perfectly comfortable state, then we would have solved our sin problem. Because it's like, nope, nope that's, Adam and that's Eve we would were probably... in the Garden of Eden and they, and they, had, and they a problem. had a problem. Yeah. So it's like, and you can sin, you know, you well, we all know this. You can be having the best day in the world sitting on the beach having all of your dreams come true and, and then get snorty at your husband for no good reason. Yeah. And it's just like it bubbles up well, from within. Well, the whole small foxes spoil a vineyard is is true no matter how great the vineyard is looking or how like it's it's true of all kinds of situations that petty sins can get in and destroy things. But the thing I was saying it's about that with mothers is like what are your children seeing of the gospel in your life and what they should be seeing of the gospel in your life uh, is part of what they should be seeing is you growing in godliness getting things right and and learning from well and also you being godly in the midst of things not always being perfect for you. No, like like being godly when someone breaks something that mattered to you. Being godly when someone, well, you know. Okay, and this is um obviously it is true that we have bodies and it is true it's harder to be godly when we are being tested in those ways. And by all means, yes, fix your headache. Yes, take the Tylenol. Yes, eat a sandwich so you don't feel so, you know, wobbly. Do all of those things, but don't think that in that you're actually fixing your sin. Because, like, I, like, remember Grandma Bessie, one time we were over there having dinner at her house, my dad's mom, and there was another guest there mm. that night. And rue the day that and, that happened. All yeah. of us, we were probably all under about 12, maybe, and the three of us kids were there. And he was the rudest rudest I'm not man. sure like we were kids so I don't think we were really in the loop about what he was doing there in the first place. No. Like I think he was probably there for counseling and stuff. But I think he was staying with them. Yeah he was but he was there for dinner and I think she made pork chops or something and she I think it was I, spaghetti. I always I think, no no no. He it wasn't that because that's what he wanted. No he was oh it was mac I and think cheese. It was, we it were was having, mac and cheese. She had made homemade mac and cheese and we were all sitting there eating but grandma's. But when we sat down and she put it on the table he said I wanted spaghetti. Yeah. He said I didn't want this. I wanted spaghetti. Full grown man. No, I think he might have been like 40. Yeah. It he wasn't, was too old. He wasn't. He and was we too were, old. We were breathtaking. We were <laughs> <laughs> scandalized would not be too big of a we word. We just all sat there stunned. We were like, what? What did he just but do? But Grandma just got up and went and made the she man did. spaghetti. She did that. She made him spaghetti. She got and up and she showing that, that she was a great deal godlier than all and of us. all of us sat there in in a Fury. total state of what I did you just do to our grandma? Grandma seemed like a mysterious creature to me at that time. Like I was like, I don't know how that happened. Like, why, <laughs> did, why did she make this person spaghetti? I know, but but the point here is I'm that, like... I'm afraid I didn't that inherit one, that godliness no, trait of hers. No, and I'm just saying that, like, if 
your if you fix your heart problems by means of ex- modifying the externals, yeah. you'll be that. Then, well, you'll be that. Is <laughs> I wasn't even thinking that. I was thinking you'll be like I'd be nice if you made me spaghetti. Like let's say if you <laughs> got to the place where you actually could control every physical circumstance of vitamins and nutritions and temperatures and yoga poses and whatever it is that you're trying to do and like you let's say that you actually got to that point you can't actually control all the people around you who may hmm. come and tempt you to sin they may trod <laughs> upon your toe <laughs> they may they may may be very difficult to deal with wasn't and, it spurgeon i this wasn't it wasn't it spurgeon who had someone tell him that he hadn't sinned he yes was that he had achieved perfection yeah, and so he was sanctified. I and think so he Spurgeon said. said, "So he trod heavily upon his foot. Like I yes. think he just stomped on his foot, and the guy, <laughs> he said, and his perfection vanished <laughs> as the morning dew. <laughs> it's like I'll ruin that streak. Like you might, you might control your whole life, but someone like Spurgeon might come stomp on your foot. Yeah. So I'm just saying that, like, if you think that you, in order to have your heart under control what? you have to keep the everything controlled around you so that nothing is uncomfortable for you nothing is difficult nothing is a trial it's like well fat chance because people yeah. are everywhere and they're gonna, you're gonna be, have trials so they're gonna be stinkers from to the you. reading and the bible reading challenge today in luke eight fifteen, it said as for that in the good soil they are those who hearing the word hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience and I think that the idea of when you hear the word, holding fast to the word in an honest and good heart, like you think, well, then what is your heart full of all the time? Mm-hmm. It's it's full of the word, like yeah. that your heart is full of the word, full of this, and it will bear fruit, which is very different from, from the um, concept of bearing fruit because you have minimized yeah. your temptations. Yeah. And I do think that like I'm obviously or thinking that you'll nobody is opposed to to anyone, you know, like discovering I will say, that they feel I'll better do, when I'll they do the their thing. diet. I'm going to do the thing and go ahead and just bring it to something more like less abstract, okay. which is that many women now are whether they meant to get into it or they got like talked into it by someone selling it on social media there's a lot of different health and wellness regimes and plans and things that you can get into but women we are like you should not be spending your life being treating yourself therapeutically all the time like like the idea of because there's alternative um options that people are like oh it's natural or it's healthy or it's safe or like if you go get these leaves in the garden and do this with it that you'll feel better when you have you know whatever they can get really elaborate but you think about like if you got up in the morning and you're like oh I feel a twinge best treat that like oh I feel I feel heaviness in my central forehead I'm going to do something about that like oh no my stomach doesn't feel settled like like there's an awful lot that we have to just be able to power through and not obsess about and you think you know it's not healthy to be spending your life working so hard to be healthy like it's but I well, it's also just such a losing battle anyway. Because, but the thing is, is I I was just thinking, if you're that kind of a mom, who is spending all of your time trying to basically get all the pillows around yourself, and position yourself just so so that you are perfectly yeah. physically comfortable. Well, what are you teaching your children? That's kind of my thing about like emotional control right. really has to begin oh, yeah. with you. Because Forgot we were talking about what, emotional control. Well, yeah, we wandered a bit of field there. But the uh-huh. thing is, is like, but back, like imagine but back to the matter of hand. <laughs> but imagine like, what are your children learning if they see that in their mother? Is basically like go to extreme lengths to to have everything the way you want it, and. 
so then that's when you get very demandy children. It's when they want to have my I must sandwich have has the, to yeah. be in perfect triangles with one yeah. half star, and it has to be in nine <laughs> pieces. And yeah. then, um, you know, like all of those, then you have to go back things. to one. and then you turn into the guy saying, "But I wanted spaghetti yeah, when you're forty well. years old." But it's just, it's. I, I don't know. I think that you're I don't think people modeling. do that, though. They don't do that because they're trying to be godly. They don't do that because they're trying to optimize their godliness. I see they that. They do it no, because I do. they're I serving it. themselves. But but when Christians are doing it, they need it to feel spiritual. Yeah. So they, they'll they say things about, well, you know, we are whole creatures, mind and body and soul together, and God created all three. All true. All yeah. totally true. But it's also, um, the flesh is pretty sneaky. You know, the flesh is one of the things we're supposed to contend against. The world, the the flesh, and the devil. Mm -hmm. And the flesh is always wanting more. The you know the darn problem with the flesh is that it's right with us. It's all all the time. (laughs) It's got a front row seat to Mm -hmm. all of our issues. But I do think that like that there are women who spend a lot of their time on focusing on that, and I think that they don't see that they're actually and we don't sometimes you take things as a total given like someone say i just really don't feel right unless i've had my hair done recently and <laughs> and people are like is that so like you know like but nobody challenges it because they say it like this is just who i am it's just the way i am you know like i need a lot of time for myself or i do you know like these this is just who i am and there's That's nothing wrong with wanting to get your hair done or getting it well, done. Well, I'm not standing just, against that. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, it's a matter of... I'm saying the expectation that this is a simple requirement for me to be yes. a person that's kind <laughs> yes. is, is wrong. Yeah. Much like, I don't think... I'm not real concerned about... I Well, I'm not at all concerned about being addicted to coffee. I like coffee. But if you can't control yourself because you haven't had coffee, or if you're like yeah. angry because you haven't had coffee, something's going wrong. You right. know, what? like, like that's a that's a problem. Yeah. Like and if you have anything that you have, um, and it's it's kind of one of those things. If he who is faithful with little will be faithful with much, and you think of what God may ask of you in your life, think of all the people who have had legit awful sad trials and stories and things that they had to get through you know Cory ten boom or the martyrs or whatever and it's like can we not be faithful through um a gray day with a headache like yeah if you can't be if you can't be faithful there how will you be faithful when god asks something well this this connects to something i've been thinking about which is you know we do not believe that all christians are called to the mission field like no to the like to not the specific mission no field. to to like sell their homes and go overseas right. we don't believe that christians are all called to that right but one thing that we do believe is that every christian is required to live as much for the lord as if they were on the mission field do you know what i mean like that you're mm-hmm. and the problem for many christians is that there's a lot more like it's hard to see when you're at home Mm-hmm. It doesn't stand out if someone is really living just for their own interests most yeah. of the time and then pretending to be a serious Christian at other times. Or if they're really living living a life of total sacrifice for the Lord in their normal life. But missionaries are called to a different kind of sacrifice than any other Christian, but not more of one. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're they're called to... Well, I mean, sometimes they're called to more of a sacrifice, but I mean... The, the amount we're supposed to be giving the Lord is your whole life. Yeah. All of Every your Every Christian. All of your mind. All, all of, of your, your soul, strength. All of all your, your strength. Yeah. And it's not like, well, some people do that and the rest well, of us just Well, there's Christians get, and then there's us. We just get to do a pinch yeah. of, of cumin. Yeah. You know? and like, well, yeah, what I <laughs> dill, decided to do is dill. to live for myself and acknowledge <laughs> the Lord on weekends. Like, that's what I'm going to do. It's like, no, that's not it. Like, the, right. it's your whole life. And, and if God planted you in a comfortable neighborhood, your spiritual life should still be uncomfortable. Like, I actually believe that, well, uncomfortable in one sense, not in other ways, but in, I, I believe that God requires a lot of his children and that there's no way, if you're really living for the Lord, you're not going to be in a place where you're getting bored well, with your spiritual we challenges. we actually should all be climbing a mountain all the time. Yeah, like, and, and if you're not tired or you're not, if you don't have, like... 
a lot of stuff on your plate. But and everybody, ask the Lord to show you what you should be doing. But I think we're all climbing the same mountain. But we all are doing it on different paths a little bit. You know? It's like uh-huh. God calls some people to really very difficult places. And other people have much more comfortable circumstances. But the comfortable circumstance should not be confused with, oh, then not that's, going somewhere. God didn't want me to have to try. Right. And it, it's just, I think that there's some stuff that has been so unhelpful that it's not, um, it's like little teaching, little ways of talking that slip in and people don't notice that that's overtly unbiblical, you know, like, Ooh, there's um, a lot of those things. Yeah. But then you just start thinking, you're right. I need to back off of everything that makes me feel too busy. Like, or I need to, which you might, you might need to, if you have like, for some reason, taken up charity dog walking for people (laughs) and then, you know, like, sure, maybe you should back off of some things, but the self care is not the job of Christians, you know, like being overly consumed with self care. Yeah. Self. There is, of course, yes. I know we do this where we're always like, I'll qualify what I just said. It's like, yes, you need to live another day, but so that you can serve another day. You know, like like you're trying to maximize. I talked about this in a podcast a long time ago, but here I go again. Uh, I pray sometimes. It's like a mental image. We don't have very long. Like our life is flying by. Like, like this is going fast. And I think of it like the moment you're born, it's like a rock being thrown into a pond. And it's just going mm-hmm. at a certain rate. And the this mental image to me is like, Lord, spread me out. Make me bigger. Give it more heft. By the time I hit the water, I want it to be some major impact. Do you know what I mean? Like, sure. And it's not... I'd like to enjoy this journey as I sail through the air and I'm going to not think about hitting, you know what I mean? Like I'm going to not think about the fact that, that there is an end for all of us an end here on earth. There's only so much work we can do. I love when Nate gave that, whatever talk that was where he talks about us all running around and panicking under the sun and then flat on our backs for seven hours. (laughs) And then, and then we're like, oh, back at it. Go, 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 go. It's like we couldn't bear with this for eternity. Like it's yeah. only so much of our life that we that we have this like this need to sleep, this need to go. You know, like it's a, but it's a sprint. It's like yeah. making it faithfully to the end, like running yeah. with the encouragement of these clouds of witnesses who have gone well, before us. And and I have. I think that it's very noticeable throughout the New Testament that having your having your eye on that final finish line is a very healthy and very biblical thing to do. Like, is God going to say, "Well done, you good and faithful yes, servant"? Yes, like, or is stay he the say, course, like, Christian. What have you been doing all They're this like, time? They're like, you remember how you were supposed a to be running self-care. a race? Do you, you remember? Were doing, you were doing a lot of self care that whole well, time. Well, I like the idea of like the Lord's like, so there's this cloud of witnesses, and you were supposed to be running that race with endurance, <laughs> and you're like, well. I decided to do some tailgating out and have a little picnic and do some other stuff that sounded more refreshing. Like, you know, it's not the image of the Christian life. It's not an image of pleasantly passing the time until no. we get done. No. Like, it is one of pouring yourself out, imitating our Savior. You know, imitating Christ, working hard, yeah. you know, Which being is not the joyful. same thing as saying you can never rest, you can never have fun, no. well, never enjoy the beauty. The, here's never, what you just bring you know, up more issues. We don't believe that, but we do think that many Christians ignore the rest God has commanded us to take and then spend all their life trying to gin up new ideas of rest. (laughs) Like God gave us rest on the Sabbath and then said the rest of the time. And, and all of those other things that I think people use for their, you know, trying to treat their sin problem. Of course, God has made everything. It's it's. He said that it's good and thank God for it. Not the slugs. Back to the slugs. (laughs) <laughs> they spontaneously came from Satan's spawn. Evil. Anyway, um, <laughs> but the point is, is that thank God for the things. If you're able to take a Tylenol and fix the headache, thank God for it. If yeah. you can't take a Tylenol for whatever reason and you still have your headache till bedtime, thank God for it. Yeah. That's what he had for you today. Yeah. And you have to be able to be grateful and, and none of the fruits and of the it. spirit get wiped out because you are hungry. Oh, I, you thought, I thought you just stopped the podcast <laughs> right there. 
she went no. to check the time, but I, I thought know. she stopped it. I think it. we probably need to we wrap this We do need to wrap it up. up. I think we should just wrap it up and skip tips today. And we'll come back with better tips next time. Why? You told me you had one. Had one, but I feel like it's it's like we're at 48 minutes. Oh, that's true. And so now if we talk too long, everyone's going to hate us. That's mm-hmm. valid. That's yeah. valid. Did so you have one you're that you're going to save? Short? I'll save mine. You're going to save yours. All right. So we'll we'll come back to you with a tip okay. from Rachel. Yeah. Next time. Next time. Let's so, all hope I remember it. She won't. I don't. Rem- it won't. Yeah. It, you won't. Do you not have one that you wanted to share in 42 seconds or something? Mm, well, mine was not even a, a tip yet. It was a query. It Brass was a, tags? It was a, hmm. No, I'm pretty, well, okay, do I want so, that? No, um, no, I ordered and I'm on the trial basis at this moment. Not sure what I think. Uh, those Turkish towels, you know, like the flat oh, weave. Yeah. I can't remember the actual official Turkish okay. name. Yeah. But they're pretty, like those yeah. big cotton flat weave things. And I and they're supposed to be more absorbent, you know, and more... Probably take a little while that. to get them. Well, no, it's very absorbent, but it's it's a intriguingly weird thing to <laughs> grab it after the shower and feel like you've just grabbed a sheet. Mm. It's kind of like, oh... You wanted something, something a bit, wrong. like, m- more warm and fluffy? Well, there's a reason terry cloth is what it is yeah, to us. But, yeah, but I still am I'm holding You're out checking. with a maybe because it is really absorbent. It dries it dries you off, like, really fast. Actually, I think more than a terry cloth uh-huh. does. But then it's so thin mm. and interestingly different. But it, anyway, well, that's, that's my... Know. It's my... Hmm. Not really a recommend It's yet. not a product it's a, recommend. It's a ponder it's a, this with me it's idea. It's a ponder this yeah. as we consider the question of flat weave towels. I bet it's much nicer to put in a turban on your head, though. Well, I had it in a turban on my head, and it... I feel like you get a lot more squeeze out of your hair that yeah. way because it doesn't yeah, get lost it's not in too the big to hold on to. That's yeah, the problem. right. Yeah. And it really like you can kind of wring yeah. your hair out inside of there. So I could see it actually being huh. more efficient. Well, good to I'm know. Not sure yet. Good to know. Yeah. All right. That's... Until next time. Have fun, Bye-bye. everyone. Bye. I'm a 2009 graduate of New St. Andrews College, and I'm a commercial property manager. Three kids at Logos, one at home still, and I do flowers on the side out of our house. When you have these little people that you're responsible to shepherd, you realize, I need to know what I'm talking about because they need to have a firm foundation and they need deep roots so that they don't get blown over and that they're ready to stand up for the truth. I am a programmer. The language aspect of NSA is a fantastic preparation for any sort of programming. I'm a real estate broker here in town. I think absolutely the perfect um, education for being in sales of, of really any kind. I actually put it to a lot of great use when I was working in the political realm. I am a pastor in the Central Coast, California. Whatever vocation you take, it'll make you take that seriously because you're seeing it through the lens of the sovereignty and lordship of Christ. To learn more, visit us online at nsa.edu.